In this video, we're going to start our journey towards fetching live data from plant places for our search screen uh, in our app. So we hit select a plant and that's going to take us to a search screen. And up till now, we've we've just gone against some hard coded data. Uh, but what we're going to get ready to do in this next set of videos is actually go out to a live feed so that when I say common equals redbud or common equals maple, we'll actually get relevant results uh, that reflect the search term that we've provided. There's several steps we have to do for this. Uh, number one, we have to set up for threading, which we've already done. Number two, we have to do a little bit of refactoring. We don't want to put too much stuff in one class. We want to do a little bit of refactoring. Number three, we need to open a network connection using something called HTTP GET. And then number four, we're going to want to get data back parse it. By parse, that means look at some text data and convert it to actual objects that we can use, like plant objects, and then return that to our screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with uh, refactoring. If I go into the current app and I type in Redbud and then search, oh, and I probably have some breakpoints to find here that might, that might get it caught. Okay, uh, sure enough, I have some breakpoints. We'll go, we'll go ahead and let that go. Okay, what it's going to do is it's going to run this do in background and then on post execute, and that's going to bring back some hard coded data to our screen. If we're lucky here, we'll give it a moment. There we go. It's going to bring back the hard coded Circus Canadensis. You know, we kind of don't want to lose that because. We have, you know, we have put some good test data together. So in one way, we don't want to lose all of the stuff that we've done. But in another way, uh, we do want to be able to hit live data as well. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take a look. This is the plant results activity. It's what we're looking at here. It's the same thing we see back here. I am going to take this stuff. I'm going to take this uh uh, let's see, this entire collection we have here, and I'm going to right-click. Oh, and I'm sorry, I didn't show where we are. Or I'm in the, I'm in the uh, plant search task. I'm in the do-in-background method. And if you remember our previous lectures, we've discussed that do-in-background is the stuff that runs on a separate thread. Okay, so I'm going to take this chunk right here. I'm going to take this chunk of data, and I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to say refactor and I'm going to say extract method. And what you'll see is very interesting. It's going to take all the stuff that's highlighted, put it into a separate method, and then it's going to replace the highlighted text with a call to that method. So I choose extract method. Okay, method name, we're going to call it uh, fetch, uh, fetch plants. How about that? Fetch plants and it's going to take a search term. That's fine. It's going to return an array list of plants. So this is what that final signature is going to look like. Private array list plant fetch plants string search term. Uh, that looks good. Destination uh, plant search task is fine. We are going to refactor this again in just a moment, but this will at least get us started. And I choose OK. OK. And we see it's taken all this stuff and it's put it in a new method. Okay, let me disconnect. It's put it in a new method that we're calling uh, fetch plants. What I'm going to do now is we're going to move this fetch plants into a different class as well. Uh, I'm going to hold control and press M and I'm going to go to Java Perspective and this is really a DAO, a data access object. It's, it's hard-coded data but it's a DAO, it's doing data access it's not really dependent on the view layer. Many times in programming, we'll put related classes in one package. And because all of this stuff right now is in our UI package, it doesn't really belong there. It would be better off in a DAO package. So I'm going to make a new package. And this new package will be DAOs, which again are things we use to access data. I'm going to choose new. I know that's a little bit off the screen. And I'm going to choose package. And we're going to say com.plantplaces.dao and finish. Okay, so DAO, data access objects, typically used 
uh, to access data naturally. I'm going to right click on the DAO and I'm going to say new and then I'm going to say class. And now this is really just a hard-coded stub, right? It's a stub. So I'm going to say um, we're going to call this uh, plant DAO stub because we know it's kind of dummied up false data and then I'm going to choose finish. Okay, Plant DAO stub. Now I'm going to take that method that we extracted before and control. <laughs> well, I didn't copy it, did I? Okay. Uh, I'm going to go back. Sorry, I'm going to go back and I'm going to I'm going to cut that method that we just created, the fetch plants method, the method that we just uh, created by refactoring. Okay, we'll give it a second. Looks like I'm hourglassing. Okay, so I'm going to highlight this method and I'm going to control X. I'm going to cut it out of the plant results activity and we'll choose save. I'm going to go to my plant DAO stub and I'm going to paste this method. Okay, I'll control M so we can see this on the big screen. Plant DAO stub has this method. I'm going to change it to public though. Public fetch plants. And there we go. Okay, now uh, a couple things. First of all, you'll notice that the, the, the that we don't have a lot of Javadoc here, and it's always a good idea to put a little bit of Javadoc here and say uh, a stub class that returns predictable data for plants. Okay, I mean that's good enough, and then. Uh, down here, we'll add some Javadoc. To add Javadoc, I do the slash that's to the left of the shift key, and then two asterisks. And then we're going to say, uh, return a collection of plants that match a given search term. Okay, search term, the term we're searching against. Return a collection of plants that match the search criteria. Now you see what we like about having a DAO layer is if we if we have all of our data access in one class it's very pure. If we look at the import statements this is 100% Java it's not anything Android specific which means it can be reapplied uh, in other cases. Okay so control M and now our plant results activity is redlining, but this is an easy fix. Control M again. It's redlining because it doesn't know what this fetch plants method is because we have moved it. Where did we move it? Well, we moved it to that plant. Uh, we moved it to the plant DAO stub class that we made earlier. So if we want to access it now, we need to make a variable that uh, will hold our plant DAO. Okay, so plant DAO stub, that's the variable type. We can call it plant DAO is the variable name equals new plant DAO stub, like so. Okay. Now, once we have that, we'll control shift O, which will organize imports and take away that red line. Now we can say plant DAO dot fetch plants. And to make it even easier, let's make this let's make this a several step process. Okay, let's make this a let's let's cut this into a few different processes. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to I'm going to move the return line. I'm going to do a little bit of reorganizing here. Okay, I'm going to say plant dao dot fetch plants. I'm going to control one, and I'm going to say assign to new local variable. And you see, we'll call it plants. You see what it's doing here is it's saying, oh, okay, I know that plant DAO dot fetch plants is going to return a collection of plants. Okay, good. So we're just storing that in a temporary variable, and then we're going to say return plants. So uh, let me add some comments. Fetch the plants from the DAO. Okay. Whoops. <laughs> return the matching plants and save and we're all good okay at this point the application is going to work the same as it has before it's just a little bit better organized 
Now, one thing is, make the variable that will hold our plant DAO. Notice that right now we've hard-coded it to this new thing called plant DAO stub. Okay, and we want to preserve the work that we've done there and the plant, you know, and when hard coding uh, some predictable results. But we also want the option to get results in a different way, and that is by using the um, online, uh, by using the online data. So we need a different class that's going to look a lot like this. Okay, we need a different class that's going to fetch online data, and it's going to look a lot like this. Okay it has to have the exact same method signature to make it easy for us to switch from the stub, oh, I'm in the right place, plant results activity, when it, if it has a, one second please, let me get reoriented. Okay, we're back. So uh, we wanna make it easy to switch from the stub to an actual implementation. And the best way to do that is to ensure that when we do do that actual online implementation, we're still able to call this exact method this same way and get this return type, okay? So we need some way, uh, we need some way, plant DAO stub. Okay, we need some way to create another different class that has this exact same method signature. And as a matter of fact, that's fairly easy to do. Uh, what I can do is I can right click and choose refactor and I can, I can choose extract interface. And what that will do is that will create an interface. Okay, not a user interface, but it will create a contract. And what the contract means is that anyone who implements this interface, any class that implements this interface is under contract to provide this exact method right here. Okay. Okay. Let's see how it works. It's kind of hard to explain. Let's just see how it works. We're going to say, we're going to call this iPlant DAO. Okay. And okay. And when I choose okay, watch what changes up here on line 12. Watch line 12 very carefully. Watch what changes. I choose OK. OK, notice that now we say plant DAO stub implements iPlant DAO. OK, and what's iPlant DAO? Let's click on this. This is the interface that I just made. Now, in your projects, don't feel obligated to use interfaces. This is uh, more of a computer science concept but one I just wanted to kind of show in, in a matter of refactoring. So uh, we have a fetch plants method here. And what we're saying is that any class that implements this iPlant DAO must implement this fetch plants method with this exact same signature. Okay, so let's see how we can actually use this then. Let me go back to my DAO package. And now what we're going to do is we're going to start working on that online plant DAO that's actually going to access online data. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to say new, and I know this is a little bit off screen, new and then class. Now watch this. This is very interesting. The name of the class is going to be plant, uh, on, let's call it online plant DAO. Okay, super class is fine. Interfaces, I'm going to choose add, and I'm going to choose iPlant DAO. Okay, now what do I mean by I'm adding this interface? That means I'm putting this class under the contract that it must have every method defined in this interface, okay? And the method signature must match. So I choose finish, and take a look what happens as soon as I choose finish. Okay, online plant DAO, online plant DAO, it has this method, and now all we have to do is implement this method. It has this method, and now all we need to do is implement this method. So I control M, and I go back to plant results activity, and now watch something really interesting. Control M again. Okay, watch something really, oops, sorry, I think I'm in the wrong one. Um, where am I? Oh, no, I'm not. Oh, look what it did. Okay, now this is, uh, now that is interesting. I didn't realize it did this automatically. Notice that line 62 changed. Now, the variable type is the interface. The object type is still plant DAO stub. Okay, if you remember we talked about polymorphism a few videos ago and what we said is the variable type tells us what methods were allowed to call. The object type tells us what will happen when we call those methods. 
So the variable type can be an interface because that interface is just a definition, a list of methods. The object type has to be a class that implements that interface. So watch this. When I'm ready, when I'm ready to go ahead and when I've done all my work to go out and fetch the uh, JSON, do the search query online, when I have my online, all that code finished up, and I'm ready to swap this out and tell plant results activity to no longer use the hard-coded data, but instead to use the live data, the change is going to be ridiculously easy. All I have to do here is replace plant DAO stub with online plant DAO. Do you see that? And control shift O, organize imports. Because they both implement the same interface, this stays the same. And more importantly, because they implement the same interface, this stays the same as well. The call to this method stays the same. And why is that? The method is defined at the interface. And it's implemented both with the online plant DAO and with the option we had there before, which is the option I'm going to go ahead and commit the plant DAO stuff, okay? So that's that's soon to come. I just wanted to get a conversation started where we could see, we could, we could do a little bit of refactoring and get ready to jump hands-on in our networking. Uh, but I wanted to get this out of the way first so we could look at that in a, in a separate set of lectures. So what we've seen today is that we can take related classes and put them together in a package. In this case, we're taking all of our data access logic and putting it in the DAO package. That data access logic is uh, platform independent. It, it should be, I mean, in this case, we're taking it away from the Android user interface so it doesn't have any hard dependencies on the Android user interface. And in theory, can be used uh, in other situations then, can be used in other platforms outside of Android, can be reapplied. We know we've always had this DTO package and we've done a little bit of work to refactor and clean up our plant results activity. So uh, no additional functionality just yet, just a little bit of reorganization. I'm gonna go ahead and post this to GitHub. And uh, in our next video, we'll take a look at how we can actually uh, communicate across the network. Thank you.